Anybody can confirm it? Yes. Okay, fine. Thanks. So uh, this is a thyristor bridge rectifier uh, in problem. It is given, and we had to find the power factor for the circuit. And uh, uh, how to proceed for this problem? Uh, I will tell. So uh, let me. So uh, this is a single phase thyristor bridge rectifier uh, for which I will draw a circuit how it would look like. You would be aware already, I guess. So this is a thyristor bridge. Which is supplied by an AC source. And there would be some load. Sir, जो दिख रहे वो नहीं दिख पिच पड़ा सर. आ, my screen is not visible. आ, uh, this whiteboard. What are you seeing now? आ, desktop पर दो screen show कर रहा है सर जो कि एक पर question forty three है सर एक दूसरे side में जो screen share किया गया है कौन कौन सा join है उस. Okay. 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 Uh, now is whiteboard visible? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So uh, what I was discussing that this is the problem uh, where thyristor bridge rectifier is required, and that is supplied by two uh, thirty volt, fifty hertz supply. Okay. Let's say T one, T two, T three, T four. So in this circuit. we have to find out the power factor so can anybody let me know what should be the procedure to find out the power factor in this kind of circuit anybody okay so uh you know uh, power factor is what in terms of like how it is lagging how the current waveform is lagging from the voltage waveform right so uh, but uh, generally in uh, power electronic circuit uh, there are so many components of current uh, one is fundamental uh, on which we rely upon which can give us the active power uh, in majority and other is like harmonic component of fundamental uh, let's say third harmonics fifth harmonics and so on so power factor is the angle between v1 and i s1 this is known as fundamental power factor or you can say uh, that uh, cos alpha it is known as uh, that uh, depends upon the firing angle and the input power factor uh, which is defined with uh, is the angle between vs and is okay with vs1 and is1 that is known as fundamental power factor and or distortion power factor and this uh, actual power factor of overall circuit with overall or total component of voltage and current that is known as your total input power factor right so uh, we were asked this one and this firing angle was provided in the problem i hope you are able to see the firing angle provided in the problem that is 30 degree and it is also mentioned that uh, it is delivering a constant dc current in the load that is of 10 ampere okay so this why the thing here and after that uh, i will draw some waveform of voltage and current so that you will be able to visualize the waveforms and then you can identify easily what kind of 
uh, waveform and what kind of lagging or leading is it? Yeah. So voltage is anyway sinusoidal. So Vs is equal to Vs1. Uh, there is no harmonic component. So that is the advantage of sinusoidal voltage. And its magnitude is 230 volt RMS means 230 root 2 volt of peak amplitude and this will be pi okay now after some firing angle uh, let's say uh, this uh, circuit you are seeing here and alpha was given 30 degree so at 30 degree t1 and t2 will be turned on at 30 degree t1 and t2 will be turned on and this load would be in forward connection right uh, like this t1 and t2 is on t1 and t2 would be on and here like a uh, load would be connected and current would flow okay so in this manner uh this t1 and t2 will flow and the pulse but this forward current this is is positive let us assume this direction is positive so this current is positive for this half uh, let me identify this alpha alpha and if this current is positive and this voltage is directly connected to supply if we can see here there are nothing inductance or uh, capacitance or anything else so this v0 would be equal to vs from alpha to whatever point this t1 and t2 would conduct okay so it will start conducting from alpha and it will conduct till uh, pi this was pi this was 2 pi at least it will conduct till pi in problem it is said that it, it is delivering constant dc current of 10 ampere okay so uh, the current of constant dc of 10 ampere it means uh, there is no discontinuous conduction in the circuit and hence uh, this t1 and t2 would continue to conduct pi plus 30 degree and after that point this t2 and t3 and t4 will will take over and t1 and t2 would be in reverse biased and it will get turned off so from alpha to pi plus alpha this this is the voltage waveform of output and this is kind of voltage waveform now uh, we had to calculate the waveform of this is fine so for Calculating the waveform of IS, we all know IS could be in two form. Either it could be I naught or minus I naught. Why? Because this load is directly connected to supply. When T1 and T2 would conduct, uh, this current will uh, flow in this manner T1, T2, and it will connect the load in this manner when t3 and t4 would conduct so again t3 t4 you can see the thin line thin red line So it will flow in this manner, right? So that would contribute minus I naught because its direction would be the opposite of this load, right? So uh, that's the concept here. If you see the current is going in this direction, this direction. Earlier it was going in this direction. So that's the fundamental here. I hope you are able to catch it. If any doubt, you can stop me in between. Sir, sir, yeah. small doubt, sir. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Sir, uh, can I explain, sir, that uh, diagram? Uh, this diagram, a circuit diagram, you are asking? Yes, Cir okay. circuit diagram. Uh -huh. 
see uh, when t1 and t2 was conducting so the current direction from this load side current direction will be from a to b let me denote a plus, from plus to minus right and this would be same irrespective of supply current getting reversed or not for blue one i have drawn the blue connection for t1 and t2 right and for conduction of t1 and t2 this current direction y like this it is getting in similar with i naught but when t3 and t4 would be in forward conduction mode then what will happen you see this conduction sir sir sir, mm -hmm. sir. yeah yeah please sir sir t1 t1 direction up direction down direction t1 is up direction na? Uh, let me show you t1 is in this yes, this sir. direction T1, uh, the conduction happens from N out to cathode, right? From A Can to K. Can we repeat again? Yeah. Can we repeat again? Any current will flow in thyristor from anode to in cathode. Diagram. Huh. So this is anode, this is cathode. So cu current is, will flow from anode to cathode from T1. And similarly, in similar manner in T2, right? In T2 also it will flow in this manner. It will go in this manner. Are you able to follow this? Let me draw once again. Uh, let me rub this. Sir, once again, sir, repeat again. Yeah, yeah, I am repeating again. Let me erase the earlier part so that I will be able to go the current direction again. if t1 and t2 is conducting then current direction would be this you agree till this point uh, gangadhar uh, you were asking you agree till this point yes sir ha huh. so uh, sir, this malle doctor doctor repeat again sir signal is not connected okay okay can you repeat sure. again sir yeah sure yeah Anybody else is asking? Anubhav, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir, sir. Please explain the concept to us. He just create nuances control class also. Uh, can you repeat it? I did not get that point. Sir, please please explain it to us and then explain to him because okay uh, he okay so uh, Ganga, that what is happening? Your connection is low. So anyway, I will put this recording session in on my YouTube channel. So you can access from there or you can go to NPTEL gate website. You can access it from there as well. Is it fine, Gangadhar? Yeah, so I hope so. It would be fine for you. So uh, I was telling that this could be the waveform of V0 and it will repeat for other thyristor, or oh, sorry, other cycle. In similar manner any doubt till this point now the time is to show the current waveform of is right is will be always i naught and this was i naught and when t1 and t2 was conducting is will be equal to i naught right from alpha to pi plus alpha that alpha is 30 degree given in the problem and after that when t3 and t4 was conducting then is is equal to minus i naught if you identify the current direction here t3 and t4 it would be opposite of i naught so uh, let me draw this from alpha to pi plus alpha and in similar manner for other part as well. So this is a, a square wave, a square wave uh, diagram, which would consist several harmonics of fundamental component, and that 
fundamental component will also have some contribution uh, and i would say that would contribute majorly in any power electronics converter and it should contribute majorly because that is the point of using any uh, dc to ac or ac to dc converter so uh, this blue one you are what you are observing this is is1 okay this is is1 and this uh, vs vs is anyway uh, sinusoidal and is1 i have shown you how you can obtain a sinusoidal waveform from a square waveform and you can easily observe that phase difference between these two waveform is alpha right here alpha this much phase difference between these two so this is fundamental displacement angle or we can say the phase difference between fundamental component of voltage and current that is alpha and that is also called as fundamental power factor so uh, this cos alpha is 30 degree but we need to find out the angle between vs and is and if you add all the components of is so one factor which is known as distortion factor that would get multiplied with with this power factor this is known as g and this total sir, can i repeat again sir that graph uh gangadhar i guess you have a weaker signal at your end so what i suggest you uh, i will upload i will upload this session it's of recording is... uh, gangadhar you can watch this session on youtube uh, recording will be available i think your signal is very weak so you try to yes, sir, uh, only, sir. Signal is weak. yeah yeah so on youtube it will not be any problem so you can catch up from there because others will be uh got behind i can, can explain sir that Earlier also in the book, yeah. I wanted to say that he created motions in other classes as well. So this, like, yes. disturbance. Okay, okay. So, yes. uh, please, Gangadhar, you stay muted, please, uh, because others are getting disturbed. Uh, you can access this session from YouTube. I hope it would be okay for you. So, I am moving ahead. So, uh, the total input power factor would be multiplied with G. Why G? I will explain. And what is G? That also i will explain see uh, is1 and is there should be a relationship between these two current because both is the component of single entity that is source current and is1 would be always less than is because it is a part of is so there there is one factor defined to relate the ratio between is1 and is and that is called as distortion factor g this is distortion factor okay is1 is a fundamental component. fundamental okay. fundamental this blue one you can see from the graph and is is the red one which you can see from the graph yes yeah fine so uh earlier our power factor angle between vs and is1 anyway vs and vs1 is same but it was contributing to cos alpha now i need vs1 and is the angle would be same with one factor how uh, this is is equal to you can see is1 by g or the relation with distortion factor that's why this g factor is getting multiplied here any doubt in, till this point if not then i will move ahead and i will try yes, to sir, sir please explain this again okay, why this... we multiply g ha huh. see uh, earlier uh, this alpha was the angle between vs1 and is1 but we need a relationship between vs and is right so there is a relationship between is1 and is this is the relationship between is1 and is so we are putting we are moving from is1 to is so we need one factor uh, like uh, 
how to put it uh, we need one factor that will be accumulated to the power factor formula so that factor would be g and g is nothing but the relationship between is1 and is uh, am i getting through yes sir okay thanks so that why the reason to introduce this g g is nothing it is the ratio between fundamental and total that's it so uh, how will we calculate g that is another point and at the end i will tell you uh, what is the shortcut there is always a shortcut for such kind of problem that is known as you know you might have also seen that power factor is equal to g times cos alpha and g for this type of problem uh, for single phase full wave converter g is nothing but 2 root 2 by pi this kind of uh, uh, values people used to mug up but uh, i will show how it is coming like that so uh, is1 is the you know uh, sinusoidal one and if you see this uh, how to calculate the fourier series of this uh, square wave so let me show you uh, this i know So is would be summation of n is equal to 1, 3, 5 to infinity for i naught by n pi for i naught by n phi sin n omega t minus n alpha. So why I am uh, writing this expression? So if there is any square waveform, I am just telling you a shortcut. You can either derive it from you know concept of Fourier. A series so uh but uh, in power electronics i believe that you if you know for this series of one or two kind of waveform you will be easily get through all types of problem because you will majorly see a square wave because the work of power electronics is to provide a sinusoidal thing but that fails in that purpose so it kind of tends to provide us a square waveform so anywhere you can see that or maybe at some point of time, I would take one session on uh, like simplification of this kind of series, uh, this kind of waveform, where you can just, uh, uh, there would be some tricks or ways to calculate the Fourier series. But uh, I think you would be aware uh, for this kind of a square waveform, the peak uh, value magnitude of a square waveform that is multiplied by 4 by n pi sin omega t. But since it is shifted by alpha angle, that's why, uh, and it is shifted uh, towards right. So, sorry, it should be plus, uh, right? No, no, minus, minus only. So, I am using this concept from signal and system. If it is shifted rightwards, so it would be minus. So, that's why N alpha would multiply it. And anyway, alpha would not contribute in calculating the factor of G. But uh, this kind of waveform, you can easily derive such kind of Fourier series. Uh, any issue till this point? So, and if I move ahead and I will try to compute IS1 RMS and IS RMS. So, first I will try to write what will be IS1 and IS1 would be for I naught by 1 into pi because N will be 1 sine omega t minus alpha and if i will try to take this uh, rms one so is1 rms would be 4 i naught by pi and for calculating rms we will divide it by root 2 so it will come out to be 2 root 2 by pi i naught any doubt this till this point no oh, fine thanks so IS1 RMS we calculated. Now we need to calculate IS RMS, right? And IS RMS for the square waveform you would uh, easily calculate uh, because if you uh, square this, so this will become I naught square and omega t. Let me tell you IS RMS is equal to uh, 1 by t IS square 
d omega t from alpha to pi plus alpha we can take sorry we can take 2 by t because it is periodic anyway so you can take this way or you can also write like 1 by t since this is a half wave symmetric so uh, we can easily go for half period otherwise you can what you can write you can write from alpha to um, 2 pi plus alpha to, alpha to pi plus alpha is equal to 1 by t by 2 yes, I means 2 by t yeah uh, half. For, for half half time yeah half. You, are, you are correct half. but when i am doing from alpha to 2 pi plus alpha you can take one full cycle doesn't yes. matter yeah. huh. you are right huh. so uh, since it is half wave symmetry so i will further simplify it from alpha to pi plus alpha and i is a square and that is nothing but if you do a square for this portion for this portion it is already i naught if you square this negative term it will also become positive and it will again become i naught so i naught square will be for throughout the period so that will be i naught square d omega t and uh, after solving it uh, you will get uh, d omega t uh, if you do it 2 by t uh, i naught square is constant so let me take and d omega t if you integrate from pi plus alpha minus alpha and, and it will become pi and t is anyway 2 pi so to, uh, 2 by 2 pi would get cancelled out this term would get cancelled out with this term and it will become i naught so that will be your isrms uh, any dot i don't think so it should be but you can ask so we uh, calculated IS1 RMS and IS RMS and now we need to take the ratio between them and if you calculate the ratio between them so uh, this would be uh, IS1 RMS by IS RMS so IS1 RMS was 2 root 2 by pi I naught 2 root 2 by pi I naught and that was IS1 RMS divided by IS RMS is I naught. So I naught and I naught get cancelled and G will become 2 root 2 by pi. So this will be your distortion factor for this problem. Uh, that's why I told uh, this waveform is quite a common uh, across the single phase rectifier, all single phase inverter, you can say. And hence, uh, this value would be. Uh, very common in your gate problem. So, uh, if you remember, it's well and good. It could save you uh, one or two minutes in exam. Otherwise, you uh, always approach from a standard rule. So, I hope it was fine till this point. And final answer I would calculate here. So, uh, final answer would be cos phi. That was z cos alpha and g was 2 root 2 by pi into cos 30 and that would come out to be you know uh, yeah that will come out to be 0.78 so it would be answer to the problem so it was asked for two marks in gate 2016 in session one so i hope it is fine to you now if yes, any sir. If any last issue in this problem, I can again discuss. So this was Sir, asked. Ah, yeah. Input power factor is the angle between the source voltage and source side current. Right. And the power uh, the power factor asked here is between. AC means. Between... It is written in the problem. It uh, AC means is written here. No. AC means means in between source voltage and source current. Yeah, AC means is uh, in rectifier. AC is from input side, which is source. So uh, the source is connected to AC, and hence AC means is, will be. You can refer it from the problem that AC is input voltage and input current. Anyway, in rectifier. We are calculating the input power factor, sir. Yeah, because you cannot calculate output power factors. Why? Any reason for that? Why can't you calculate output power factor in the problem? 
DC, DC yeah, current is obviously. So that's that's the obvious thing. Uh, in output it is DC. If it is not mentioned, it is just mentioned that it is rectifier. So you will always focus on AC side. Fine. In inverter, yeah, you can always focus on output side. So that is the thing. Yeah. Uh, how the how you from graph you say that the power factor, the angle between fundamental voltage and fundamental current is cos alpha. Hmm. Yeah, so I showed you this waveform. So you can see this waveform you can visualize. IS1. Yes, sir. Huh. So you see uh, this I, IS waveform, it got shifted by angle alpha due to firing angle, right? Yes, the, re sir. the reason behind shifting of this IS waveform was due to firing angle. And if you draw the fundamental Fourier of this square wave, you will get the zero crossing point will come at alpha and pi plus alpha. Agree? Yes. Huh. So Vs and Vs1, Vs is sinusoidal. So all the component of Vs is anyway fundamental. So there would not be any other harmonic component in Vs. So Vs is Vs1, Is is shifted by alpha. So the angle between Vs and Is1 is cos alpha. So that is fundamental component power factor is there. Fine? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Huh. But we need a total power factor. That is angle between Vs and Is. And since this waveform would get some distorted, if you add up, uh, if you add up some third harmonics as well, so all this harmonics component would be seen like that fifth harmonic like that so so this waveform would get distorted if you add all the components so that power factor would be shifted so that is known as your input power factor what will what will be seen from the ac means from supply yeah from your socket your input socket if you can see from you uh, you got in your home single phase supply so that is AC means. Fine, Anubo? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Any other doubt? No, sir. Fine, thanks. So, uh, I hope this problem was clear to you. I will shift to some other problem that is related to machine. And one problem is based on transformer, AD current or iron loss component that was also asked in the same year for two marks so let me take that problem uh, are you able to see the problem based on transformer this was asked in 2016 or two marks. So uh, here we had to calculate the hysteresis loss and ED current loss, and you have to write the ratio between both of them. So uh, 400 volt 50 hertz supply of transformer was given, and it is its three operat operating point is given in the problem. First operating point is 200 volt 25 hertz. And at that operating point, iron loss is given 2 kilowatt. Another operating point is 416 volt 52 hertz. And at that operating point, what will be the losses that we had to calculate? And the first operating point was 400 volt 50 hertz. And its iron loss was given 5 kilowatt. So, uh, any common thing, can you able to visualize any common factor among these three operating point? If you recall. Yeah, uh, like uh, this. If this is uh, loss would not be constant, that factor would be, uh, that factor would be constant throughout. So uh, why so? Uh, whenever this um, if ratio you might have heard. So if this is constant, then your factor KH and KE, which would contribute to KI, 
that would remain constant otherwise uh, this factor would come from uh, the loss formula of ph and pi Uh, is anybody able to recall the uh, expression of pH and PE? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. P is equal to K A plus square B M square, sir. F F square B, No. No, F, sir. F, okay. Only F, sir, and B M K power X. Okay. F and B M raised to power X. A P is equal to K A plus square B M square. K F square B M square and one factor if I would recall clearly thickness ka square. Yes, sir. Uh, and here uh, also. Yes, sir. As 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 we direct constant like P I is equal to A A into A plus B F square. Uh, and B M is proportional to V by F. So if you put this V by F in this expression in P H K H F v y f raised to power x right so if v y x is constant let's say then whatever will be the ratio that would be constant so it will not matter if v y f is constant so this would be insignificant during that time if this ratio is not constant then you have to take proper thing and then a strain mix constant would come in picture this x is generally varies from 1.622 and similarly if bm if you put v by f ka square then you can get it ke f square right so uh, i think some mistake is there A B M square. Sir, can I say sir? हाँ, yeah, please. Go ahead. I uh, sir, यहाँ पर B by F जो है दोनों केस में है constant है. हाँ. तो okay, okay. जो भी yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. So if it is constant, it won't matter here, right? That's what you want to say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. हाँ, हाँ. So it will effectively uh, vary with K E F square. So thanks. Actually, that's quite a long time since I revised it. So that's why you guys also keep revising all the things. So, but I remember that pH uh, varies with frequency, kH times F, and P varies with uh, F square, that is KEF square. So, hence, if you go for the high speed thing or high frequency thing, uh, why frequency does matter in transformer? Uh, because uh, if you go for the high frequency thing, your transformer will become a smaller and a smaller. Same thing happens with motor or generator set. If you go for high speed motor, you see that your number of poles would get lower and your motor size would start to become smaller and smaller. So, but at the same time, your AD loss and hysteresis loss would also get added up. It would be significant. You see, it is varying with F square. So that is quite huge. And in uh, motor we try to or in any machine you try to take care because uh, it might not be you know quantifiable to you but generally in machine if you go at higher speed this iron losses become dominant compared to your copper loss so that's that's why you we use this lamination you know this lamination uh, thickness so any motor would be laminated that a stack gets laminated uh, single single so for that purpose uh, your thickness this uh, eddy current losses that depends on t square why because the smaller the lamination thickness would be the lesser would be your eddy current uh, loss so do you know how much the thickness of lamination generally we use for uh, our silicon steel or kind of modern day how much lamination <laughs> One mm, mm, two mm. Two mm. Yeah, one, one mm, two mm. Okay. 0.2 mm. 0.2 mm. Yeah, you are quite close. Around point. 0.35 mm. Yeah, 0.35 is very common. That is known as material M two thirty five, and uh, 
or M19 uh, as well. So 0.35 is very common. You can easily get in India. But nowadays, since uh, very high power, uh, very compact motors are required, very compact drive planes are required. So the minimum uh, lamination is still, uh, till date I have seen, uh, that thickness is 0.1 mm. And believe me, if I am going to design a motor for like 500 kilowatt or 600 kilowatt, it improves the efficiency from 92% to 97%. So 5% of efficiency in terms of, you know, hundreds of kilowatt, that is significant. So that kind of help this a smaller laminations does in uh, electrical machine. So that's, I just wanted to quantify this concept. So it is very, you know, crucial in machines, this AD losses and hysteresis losses. So moving ahead with the problem. Uh, the three points are given, so I can form three equations. Uh, based on uh, pH is equal to KHF, P is equal to KEF square, and total iron loss, if I write, that would be sum of hysteresis and AD. And I can write KHF plus KEF square, right? So uh, I will write three equations since three points are given. So first was given 450 hertz and 5 kilowatt. So I can write 5 thousand watt is equal to ah into 50 plus ke into 50 ka square if i will simplify it so uh, this ah plus uh, you know 50 50 so 50 by 102 ke i guess uh, but it is 50k both side divide kar denge se 50 yeah, yeah yeah you can di you divide it with 50 on both side so you will get kh plus 50k kh plus 50k is equal to 100 so it is your first equation and similarly uh, the second point is given let me show you it is given at 25 hertz, 200 volts. So you can see the V by F is constant here. So that's why I am applying this direct KHF and KEF square. So 40, 400 by 50. So that comes out to be 8. Okay, V by F ratio is 8. Uh, let us check at 200 by 25. That would also come out to be 8. And at asking operating point for 116 by 52 so that is that would also come out to be 8 so everywhere v by f is constant so i will write another condition so that's 2000 hertz 2000 kilowatt is equal to kh into 25 frequency by 25 hertz plus ke into 25 ka square so if you uh, solve this equation, you will get Kh plus uh, 25K is equal to 80. So it will be your uh, second equation. And if you solve this two equation, you will get Kh equal to, you know, uh, 60. And K, uh, and K, yeah. So K, is equal to 0 0.8 so you can see ke factor is less because it is uh, dependent on f square so ke should be quite less so that's the thing here and now, now uh, we have asked to find out at 416 volt and 52 hertz so we know kh at 52 hertz of frequency plus ki into 52 ka square and I will put uh, 60 at the place of KH and I will put 0.8 at the place of K and after solving you will get a uh, hysteresis loss component of 3120 this come out to be 3120 and this would come out to be 2163.2 
what? We we were asked the ratio of hysteresis by AD. So uh, this is hysteresis. This is AD. So pH by PE is equal to C120 divided by 2163.2, and it is known as shared Okay, so I will see what is it. So its ratio would come out to be 1.4423. Okay, so the answer would be this one. You just have to put in answer section. So is it fine? Any doubt in this problem? Sir, अगर B by F ratio different रहेगा तो फिर flux density दोनों केस में मेरा अलग हो जाएगा। Yeah, flux density will be different. Yeah. तो फिर उससे वैसे कंसीडर करके चलना जो आप देखे चल रहे हैं हाँ देन वी हैव टू मूव एड विथ कंप्लीट फॉर्मूला देन वी हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ यू नो दिस वुड कम आउट टू बी के एच एफ रेट टू पावर वन माइनस एक्स एंड बी एम सॉरी बी बाय दिस इज एच एंड वी रेट टू पावर एक्स तो दिस फॉर्मूला वुड वर्क एट दैट इंस्टेंट एंड फ Uh, this would come out to be K E uh, K E V square T square because frequency would be cancelled out. Uh, this F and this F would be cancelled out, and then it would be K E V square T square. So that this is because supply voltage or frequency both are dependent. Iron loss iron loss depends on this frequency and voltage mainly on flux. Flux and your uh, resistance of that flux. So, uh, hysteresis loss is a function of you you know your flux and frequency. But AD current is a function of your flux and density uh, frequency as well as the lamination thickness. So that if a flux, let us say, I showed you in my earlier lectures that to complete one pole in any motor, the flux will flow like this. This is radial direction, right? Uh, it is going from one north pole and coming to south pole. If let us say there are uh, no uh, resistance to this section, this let's say axial, so some portion of flux would get leaked to axial, and some losses would uh, corresponding to that axial component. So that we want to avoid. That's why we give lamin uh, insulation between all the lamination thickness, the thinner thinner laminations, and we put some. Uh, insulation between them, so that's the reason of eddy current. Is it fine, Abhishek? Yes. Fine. So uh, I will solve now. Uh, next, uh, is it fine with everyone else? I hope so. Uh, I am moving to uh, next problem now, and that is uh, based on a uh, DC motor. Uh, very basic problem. Uh, I have already discussed uh, the efficiency figure and all, so it is also based on efficiency, and it was also asked for two marks. And yeah, so this is the problem. I hope you are able to see uh, a DC shunt generator delivers 45 ampere at a terminal voltage of 220 volt. Armature resistance and field resistance this was provided, and it is shunt connected. So the connection of uh, armature shunt are RF this. Would be our terminal voltage. Since it is a generator, so supply would be provided from the armature, and it would get dispersed in two directions. One would correspond to line that would lead to your output, and one component would be flux component. So here also two component you are able to see. Uh, one is flux component, field component, D axis component. Another is the power uh, component that is, you know, your line current due to VT and IL. So we need to calculate the percentage efficiency. So efficiency we know P out by P in into hundred percent. 
So this is our efficiency figure. Now, uh, we know that terminal voltage is Vt. If we calculate IL, then we will know that what is our uh, output power. And this 45 ampere is given. It is delivering at terminal only. So IL is 45 given. So we know output power, right? PO is equal to VT and IL. So VT, IL, that so is 89.79%. 89.79%, 89 I guess it is not the answer. But anyway, let us see. Uh, oh. Into 45, and it will come out to be 220 into 45. That is 9.9 .9 kilowatt. Okay, so this is output. Output was a straightforward. Now we want to move towards input and it is generator. So input would be output plus losses and total losses would be copper losses. Uh, which, which losses will present in this circuit? Can anybody identify? One loss is given, a stray loss, that is 375 watt. Any other I loss? Copper loss. Copper loss would be there. In which component? Which component would be there? Field, field component and uh, IMHA modules. Right, correct, mm -hmm. perfect. So uh, one would be IA square array and one would be IF square array. So a stray loss plus IA square RA plus IF square RF. So we did not calculate IF yet. So IF would be a straightforward VT by RF. VT is given. RF is also given 44 ampere. It would be 220 by 44 and it would come out to be 5 ampere. So Today was 375 plus IA is IA will be sum of IF plus IL. So IA is IF plus IL. Once you draw the circuit, it will be very easy to identify all the components of armature field or line. It doesn't matter. So it would be 5 plus 45. That would be 50 ampere. And here. Uh, IA would be 50 ka square into RA was 0 0.01 ohm plus uh, IF was 5 ka square into RF 44. So if we add all the losses, since no iron losses or mechanical losses was given, so we will ignore that and I will add it 50 square into 0 0.01. It would come out to be uh, 25 and it would come out to be 25 into 44 that is 1100 so you can see a uh, significant loss copper loss is happening in field component so and in armature resistance since it was very small so negligible amount so uh, total losses if I add it can be 11 and 4, 1500, I guess. 1500 watt is total losses. And uh, if you see and see, now I will write output by 9.9 .9 kilowatt. Again, output plus losses 9.9 .9 plus 1.5. And let me see. 9.9 .9 divided by 9.9 .9 plus 1.5 it would come out to be 86.8 percent into 100 86.8 percent is it fine yes they can just look uh to generate the mf covers e or joy major current as a donor cup product negative to work on some power that is developed power uh that is your developed power uh let me see this EA and IA is developed power. 
तो हम लोग इनपुट पावर यहाँ से तो डेवलप पावर प्लस लॉसेस यू कैन नॉट कैलकुलेट इनपुट पावर फ्रॉम डेवलप पावर व्हाई बिकॉज नो मैकेनिकल लॉसेस आर गिवन तो देन यू नथिंग इज सेड अबाउट एनी मैकेनिकल लॉसेस एंड ऑल आई हैव शोड यू पावर फ्लो डायग्राम सो फॉर जनरेटर सिंस द प्रॉब्लम आर जनरेटर तो इनपुट वुड बी मैकेनिकल राइट then some rotational losses no load current was not given if no load current would have been given then we can calculate uh, no load rotational loss so this rotational loss plus frictional and windage okay plus whatever the mechanical loss would be there i don't know ka pae is is ha that i am showing you then after developed this is the developed power and after that proper loss in armature i square r a that would come out to be output and since uh, the field is integrated in the circuit so i f square r a would be also there otherwise if it would have uh, separately excited uh, motor or generator then this term would not be counted i f square r a so this you should count it very carefully and it is self excited uh, that's why we are counting it in power flow diagram otherwise uh, this field is excited separately so this goes straight to the output uh, is it fine abhishek yes but if iron loss hoga to wo kahan par consider acha you are asking about iron losses okay so yeah yes. when when iron loss does occur you tell me uh when uh... आर्मेचर now that power would try to transfer it to your terminal or uh, whatever is required load so that iron loss would appear in this stage you agree sir suppose karte hain se koi question hai jisme bolta hai ki iron loss plus frictional loss jo hai diya hua hai to wo bhi hum kahan par consider kar jayenge frictional loss to bhi mera develop power ke piche hoga na sir उटपुट Uh, this intermediate stage is important when you go into induction motor and synchronous motor sometimes in dc motor as well but uh, if you know the basic flow chart how you move from a stator to uh, sorry input to output then it would be okay for you fine yes uh, you yes. you try to you know visualize where the mechanical losses would occur where electrical losses would occur what is the uh, flow chart from electrical to mechanical mechanical to electrical so that kind of uh, visualization is necessary because generally in machine uh, no visualization you can do easily until and unless you go to some power plant or so so that's why i tried to show you some uh, model of machines so so that you can get a better idea or anything you want uh, i can show you at any point like whatever you want to see from simulation uh, based because i have access of that as of now so for that purpose only i sometimes use some simulation tools as well to uh, because machine is very you know uh, in ug uh, we study it in abstract manner so that should not be uh, the approach but that is what it is so uh. and then uh, uh, and abseg you have sent me one problem i guess to, to uh, tonight it is the time but anyway if you uh, I think it would be better if I will discuss that problem with everyone. So what I will do uh, in the beginning of next session, 
i will discuss your problem and uh, can you tell me what uh, the issue you are getting that problem because i kind of see that problem and it did fine okay to me सर उसमें प्रॉब्लम ये हुआ ऐसे कि जो मैं एंगल दिया हुआ है पोल्स हुआ है जैसे ये डीसी जनरेटर में से मुझे ये प्रॉब्लम हुआ कि जैसे पोल आर्क दिया हुआ है पोल पिच दिया हुआ तो उससे मुझे एरिया निकालना है जो कितना वो क्रॉस डेंसिटी निकाल रहा है वो उस एरिया से कितना निकाल रहा तो उस क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया को कैलकुलेट करने में मुझे दिक्कत हो रही है सी 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 आई विल टेल इन वेरी शॉर्ट एंड यू ट्राई टू कैच इट अप अदरवाइज वी विल डिस्कस इन नेक्स्ट सेशन so uh this is a uh, pole pitch this will be pole arc right let's say this is pole arc and this is pole pitch fine and if yeah. this is the case then uh, to calculate area you will always consider this portion only you need not take off this portion you just consider this portion because that is contributing to your air gap flux right yes ha huh. so uh, in that problem it was given it is 60 degree subtendent means total effective area you calculate for uh, entire pole and you uh, multiply with you know 120 by 180 this one uh, half pole pitch you calculate uh, one pole pitch area and you multiply with 120 by 180 that would be your effective uh, area and you do that you will get that answer you got it ये सब जैसे एक रेशियो दिया हुआ सब आर टू पोल पिच में कितना उसका रेशियो है सर दैट इज और 60 डिग्री मींस टू थर्ड पार्ट इज पोल पिच एंड वन थर्ड इज नॉट कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टू एयर गैप फ्लक्स डेंसिटी तो इसको तो क्लियर नहीं हो पा नेक्स्ट क्लास में देख हां नेक्स्ट क्लास इन नेक्स्ट क्लास वी विल डिस्कस इट प्रॉपर्ली क्योंकि इन अदर सेशन स्टार्ट हो चुका है सर ओके या श्योर यू गो अहेड एंड जॉइन थैंक यू एवरीवन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर अटेंडिंग थैंक यू